Hello there boys and girls, welcome to another episode of the Sorry If I Speak Will I Speak. In this episode we want to recap the 2015 NBA Draft. So we're going to get to the lottery picks, because we don't have time for all of the picks. And then we're going to get Hoji's reactions to the draft overall. So with that, I want to welcome my co-host, Hoji the Electric Smoji. Thank you for coming in. I know you were enjoying your excellent summer vacation. That's right. I mean, I, I hate to kind of bring this up, but I was enjoying a luncheon at Stintino Beach in Italy. And we were having a, a great meeting about uh, stopping Arctic drilling. But that's okay. I'm here now. And and this is what I have to be. Well, Hoji, I know that you're a big Lakers fan, but we have to first get to the number one overall pick, Carl Anthony Towns, who is the freshman out of Kentucky. And, and he really looks like a, a great, great uh, future player. Yeah, great pick. The guy is supremely versatile. He can shoot from the outside, block shots. Only He only played one year at Kentucky, and he didn't get too many minutes because he was on a stack team. Now, Daddy, you know how I feel about feeding cows genetically modified glass pumped full of hormones to make them big so that oh, okay, ho- ho- flesh-eating humans yeah. can devour them and suck on their teats like leeches. You know how I feel about that. I do, but we're, we're getting off topic. And recently, Daddy, I should mention, it was discovered that people in China were buying meat that was frozen oh, yeah, for to- 40 years, which is probably around the same amount of time it takes for carnivorous humans to take a dump with what with all the uh, constipation and all all that true oh, gee, listen. but that aside i have to admit that i guess they're feeding kids there some of that gmo bluegrass because two of the best big men in the nba are right out of kentucky and i'm talking about yes anthony davis and the marcus cousins and I think we can all admit that Sports Center will have even better highlights now that the two wolves have seen a full moon and just gone nuts with their roster. I mean, Zach Levine, Andrew Wiggins, Shabazz Muhammad, and now Towns? That's snap, crackle, and pop all in one healthy bowl of organic lab grown soy milk. Okay, well, uh, let's move on to the number two pick. And we're all excited about that. The Los Angeles Lakers, they selected D'Angelo Russell from Ohio State, freshman. And uh, so tell me, I mean, do, were you excited about that? Yeah, 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 I was excited. Excited. Let me tell you something. In the 80s, the Lakers had this player named Irvin Johnson. They called him Magic, not because he could saw a bunny in half and put it back together or whatever, but because like a dragon out of Celtic mythology, like a charging bull at Pamplona and Sierra, or a mad warrior, this guy was a wizard with the basketball. Yeah, we all figuratively know, we all know speaking, about of course. Magic just- now, this kid... He reminds me of Magic because they are both point guards and they can both make their teammates better by helping them score the basketball in that in that hoop area. This is all obvious. And and you know what, Daddy? He's a stand-up guy. As you know, I was recently diagnosed with astigmatism, so I have to wear glasses. Now you've been wearing glasses, if I remember correctly, since you were four. Well, no, I mean I was I was three, but yeah. Yeah, but I I was self-conscious, and he helped me pick these out when we were window shopping at the Beverly Center, and they look good. I'll admit it, they bring out my um, intellectual side, as Magic puts it. I don't know, they're a little feminine, Hoji. This kid, like Magic, makes things happen. Great vision, great poise, nice spot-up shooter, great attitude, born in Kentucky, and the old Magic approved of him on Twitter, saying, Russell will be, and I quote, a superstar. Yeah, you know, another thing that I like about D'Angelo is that he can he can slide over to the two and Jordan Clarkson can play both positions. And so, I mean, they have their two, they have their backcourt, their young backcourt for, you know, if God forbid Kobe ever, you know, retires and we really hope he plays forever. But uh, and they're both, you know, Clarkson and, and D'Angelo, they're both tall and versatile and can guard both positions and can and score and pass and so, uh, you know, moving on to the number three pick, uh, Jalil Okafor, out of, uh, the freshman out of Duke, who went to the uh, 76ers. Uh, what do you think about him? You think, he's going to, you think he's going to achieve that superstar status that everybody says? <laughs> yeah, man, he's going to be bust. Why else would the Lakers pass on him? And the Sixers just picked Joel Embiid, uh, number three overall last year. Does this mean they give up on him or are they just stacking up talented big men they, thinking they'll make some brilliant trade? Just take Mudoi. You traded the 2014 Rookie of the Year, point guard Michael Carter Williams. Now give your fan base someone to take his place. This is getting ridiculous. I think Sam Hinkie would be fired before his moves pay dividends. All right, now to the uh, fourth overall pick, Kristaps Porzingis from Latvia, who goes to the Knicks. He's a 19-year-old, uh, you know, seven-foot something uh, guy who can score from the outside. What do you think? 
Look, 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 look. Phil Jackson has no idea what he's doing. The players he liked, like uh, the tra- uh, Trey Lyles, were rated to go later, and he couldn't trade out of number four out of a number four spot. So he takes the next big fad out of Europe, like I don't know, tight jeans or espresso or something. Isn't this the same franchise that traded three, three draft picks for Andrea Bargnani and drafted Frederick Weiss and Danilo Gallinari? I mean, at some point, you have to think, your strategy isn't working. It's not really a calculated risk anymore, more like a, a calculated failure, Dadio. Honestly, who thinks this Porzingis guy will be able to be a force down low, change the direction of shots, rebound, the stuff you want from a big, ba- big man in today's NBA? He looks like the kind of guy who sh- who, who, who'd help you get something down from the high shelf at Walmart. You want a three-point shooting center? Go get Mirza Teletovic or Channing Fry. Nice role players, but not franchise players and Kentucky's Willie Colley Stein is sitting right there that guy would bring attitude to the Knicks shore up that defense and give them some you know some much needed athleticism or, or how about the Croatian Kobe Mario uh, Hezonia goodness this guy is exciting he, he kind of reminds me of the biopic about Al Gore Al I mean did you know that in 1999 in order to save the ozone layer my, my buddy and my friend Al Gore refused to use a riding lawnmower on his yard and he trimmed his grass by hand did you know that they have a YouTube video of it it's like 17 hours long but every second of it it's just it's just fascinating it's like watching you know when they watch the flowers grow in in super fast speed time that's what this that's what i get with this mario kid he would have given new york's fans a, a show for quite some time he would put some pepper in that in that sandwich you know what i mean yeah, Valhoji, but I mean, uh, you know, we, we could be really wrong on this, uh, Porzingis. I think people are, are being prejudgmental because everybody's saying this guy is different, you know, his, his work ethic, his love for the game, and his, he's embracing the, the culture and all that stuff. He really could be a star. But anyways, moving on to the fifth pick, the Orlando Magic. They select the, uh, the as you call him, Croatian Kobe, Mario uh, Zonja uh, from Croatia. So what do you think about that? I mean, do you think you don't see a risk in that, I guess? Look, 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 look. The Magic made the right decision. He's going to look great playing next to Alfred Payton, the point guard they got right Okay, now. so the sixth pick, Willie Colley Stein, who also from Kentucky, uh, is a junior though. He goes to the Kings. And do you think that this could in any way uh, mean that the Marcus Cousins will be uh, shipped out of Sacramento? I don't. First of all, Kali Stein is a great fit next to DeMarcus, and he allows him to play the four. Which sources tell me he, he really f- prefers. But also because the Knicks and Lakers, the two most realistic landing spots for Cousins, took, took people in the draft who I don't think the Kings want to receive in a trade. That leaves the Nuggets, who would have to basically trade half their team to get Cousins. And to be honest, I, don't, I still don't think that's enough. Okay, and then Emmanuel Moudier goes to the Nuggets. He played in China last year. Uh, what do you think? You think he looks promising? Yeah, I'm surprised he lasted this long, Dad. You know what? With all the great athletic point guards dominating the league right now. And then Stanley Johnson uh, from Arizona. Uh, he's a freshman as well. He goes to the Pistons. They chose him over Justice Winslow. Why do, why do you think they chose ja- Johnson, though, OG? What are your sources telling you? He has you? That, toughness, that toughness you need to play in Detroit. As you know, Dad, you know, even the squirrels in Detroit are trained in a martial art and carry mace. But I like the way Detroit's roster is coming together, you know. Jody Meeks should have a good year next year, and the addition of Ersan Ilyasova gives them better spacing and allows Andre Drummond to grow. It, it looks like they're preparing to let Greg Monroe walk, but but Stan Van Gundy has, has a plan, I think. And then number nine, Frank Kaminsky goes to the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, he was a senior, played with Wisconsin, and, uh, but, you know, the Hornets, uh, supposedly, they passed up, uh, uh, like, six draft picks from the Celtics for him. I mean, do you think, do you think he's going to pan out in the NBA, Hoji? Okay, the fact that his name is The Tank, and I am anti-violence, makes it tough to swallow. Th- that's why I'm also against calling Peyton Hillis a juggernaut, Nikolai Khabibulun, the Bulin Wall, and Andre Kerelenko, A.K. Uh, 47. I'm against that. And I also think it's offensive to call Adam Dunn the big donkey. I mean, it's offensive to donkeys. But anyways, here's another soft big man who likes to shoot from the outside and he doesn't rebound. These guys should not be going so early. And then finally, Justice Winslow was picked up by uh, the, by Pat Riley and the Miami Heat. The Duke freshman, everybody thought, you know, this guy could go in the top five. Uh, so what do you think? My guess is that uh, Pat Riley pulled what we used to call in the business back when I worked with the Pacellis. 
he pulled a forget about it. You know what I mean? Uh, all right, but uh, so what do you think about him? You know, as as a as a pick though. Solid pick. Looks like they're ready to move on from Loyal Deng. This guy was this was guy was supposed to go a lot higher. Miami's roster is pretty stacked right now. Okay, and then the Pacers they take uh, uh, Miles Turner uh, at center uh, from Texas. He was a freshman. Uh, were you were you hearing any noise about uh, Turner going this high, Hoji, before the draft? Look, I think the Pacers were really hoping for uh, Willie Colley Stein, but Turner has size and he's got range. And he can block shots. I, I like the guy. What can I say? I'm not saying he makes Roy Hibbert expendable. I'm not saying that. But he can help that team. Yes, he can. He can. Then Trey Lyles, uh, goes to the Jazz, a freshman from Kentucky. Uh, how does he change the dynamic of the, of the Jazz? What does he add? It's a pretty rugged team right now, Daddy. I remember Phil Jackson was thinking of taking this guy number four. So we probably haven't really seen what he's capable of. Or maybe that means he'll be a huge bust. I don't know. Some sources tell me one thing. Other sources tell me something totally different. And then uh, number 13 overall, Devin Booker, the shooting guard, freshman from Kentucky. Uh, he goes to the Suns. Uh, and so that's you know, another Kentucky guy. So The guy can really shoot, which is what Phoenix has traditionally liked to do. And he's still only 18. He's still only 18 years old. I, I wasn't even able to ride the bike when I was 18. The Suns also later got Andrew Harrison from Kentucky, who I think will surprise people. He didn't get a chance to develop his offense so much in Kentucky because of all those talented big men. But they trade him to the Grizzlies. This is huge for Memphis. And the final lottery pick was Cameron Payne from Murray State, the sophomore, he goes to the Thunder. And, uh, and how do you think he's going to help the Thunder? Personally, I don't like using lottery picks for backups. And they still have DJ Augustine, so Payne will probably be the third string for now. Unless they want to move Westbrook to shooting guard more often, I don't see Payne getting a lot of time. But I do like their move in the second round getting Kentucky's Dakari Johnson. Hopefully now they won't be forced to overpay Enos Cantor. All right, now since we don't have time to go through all the draft picks, I just want to get your, your general thoughts about the draft after, you know, what else do you got from Ryoji? Go. Okay, final thoughts. First, what are the Celtics thinking drafting another point guard taking Terry Rozier number 16 overall? I mean, great pick, but now their top four players are arguably three point guards and Avery Bradley, who's only six foot two. I'm six foot two. That's short. You would have thought they'd learn from the way the Suns imploded this year. Second, I thought point guard Tyus Jones was a good fit for the Cavs. I'm surprised they gave him up for two second round picks. Third, the Spurs took Nikola Milutinov from Serbia. I mean, at this point, I have to think there's some sort of secret reason they are taking all these international players. Think about it. They draft these foreigners and they get them to re-sign for less than market value. What are they doing? Depositing money in their international bank accounts? Hmm? You may make setting some up with Dr. Evil or something? I don't know. But maybe, but maybe some sources would say that. I cannot confirm that either. Fourth, I'm a little disappointed in the Lakers pick at number 27, Larry Nance Jr. Sure, sure, I give him. He's from Akron, Ohio. He's the son of a former NBA player. Good, like to keep the spirit in the loins. And supposedly he's a humble and hardworking defensive specialist. But I would have liked to see them get R.J. Hunter, who actually reminds me a little of you, Daddy. I mean, oh really? Thank you. I mean, I didn't. I never made it to the NBA, but yeah. because of your cold, selfish, capitalistic ways. The only thing he knows how to do is shoot. He doesn't care about anything or anybody else, and that's what makes him great. Now, the Celtics have him, and I'm sure they are dancing a little Larry Bird-style jig around their cauldron of evil, but the Lakers, they sleep with one eye open, and they could nab Hunter any day. But I did like the Lakers' second-round pick, Anthony Brown. He can defend, he can shoot. This roster is really shaping up. Now, they just need to get a tough defensive presence like the Andre Jordan in free agency. My fifth point, in closing, my fifth point, Dadio, lastly, I want to address something major in the news that has been happening in China. Yeah, Hoji, we're actually way over time, so... No, 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 no. No, listen, as you may know, actress Zhao Wei has recently been sued by a man who claims that she was staring at him through his television set. Yes, he claims that she was using television as a medium to transmit a stare to him through TV, right? Now, Daddy, I take reports like this very seriously. People don't understand how powerful brain waves can be. Like, like right now, Daddy, I'm going to send you a little, just, just a little tweak using my now more powerful eyes and, and brain power. Can you feel this? What, what is that? You pinched me. Come on. Could you feel that? All through brain power. What do you mean? What do you mean, man? I saw you reach over and pinch me. Come on. That's not cool. <laughs> well, that's all for today. Have a great NBA season, boys and girls. This is Hoji the Electric Smoji signing off. <laughs>